Good morning. How was everybody this morning? Wonderful. Good. Guess what I saw on the way here? A car hauler. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's so people are coming back. <laughs> I love that response. <laughs> They're coming back from the north. Um, welcome our visitors. Um, good to have you here. Good to good to see everybody. Um, got a is that a couple new kids back there, or just one? Oh, you got your hair wet. That's why I didn't recognize you. <laughs> so welcome this morning. Let us begin with our our first hymn, Thy Strong Word. Hallelujah. 
Use thy mercy to proclaim those that shout the hope that fills us, us to speak thy holy name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you of all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our psalm. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my, gro through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of, in my, of my sin. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Let us rise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here the worship and praise, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you also be gotten, the Father's Son, we pray. Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant to us, your humble servants, your holy inspiration, that we may set our minds on the things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel, chapter 33, beginning at verse 7. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 13, verse 1 through 10. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger, who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subject, subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them. 
taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them, and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptation to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the fire of hell. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man to, came to save the lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than the other ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father, who is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault, between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my, my name, there am I among them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus calling, who will go and work today? Fields are white and harvest waiting, who will bear the sheaves away? Out and long the master calleth, which reward we offers thee. Who will answer gladly? saying, here 
Probably wondering what I'm doing. I'm going to have the kids come forward. It's like, Pastor, we've never seen that move. <laughs> just, guys, just kind of sit right there. I got to grab something. So. Why do you think I put this up here? What's your guess? What if I were to do this? Who of you has a problem sometimes with the other person? You two? Okay. Come on up. One here and one here. They're related. <laughs> so why, why do you think? What do you see? I see myself. You see yourself because it's shining. You see the cross. You don't see your brother. Oh, boy, he fell right into that. That's perfect. What do you see here in this? This is a picture of a painting in the city church in Wittenberg, or a guy named Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, the other one, he's preaching here. This is a congregation. Who's in the middle? Jesus. Jesus. Where's Jesus? On the, cross. on the cross. Why do you think he's in the middle? You saw, when you looked over here, you saw the cross. Not your brother. The pastor, Martin Luther, looks at the congregation and he sees Jesus. The congregation is looking back through the eyes of the cross, through Jesus. Did your brother ever do anything to make you upset? Oh, man, come on now. <laughs> I know better than that. Did you ever do anything? What about your sister? Ooh, different story, different story. So what I would tell you is, when you see them, she's a Christian, right? She believes in Jesus? Good answer. <laughs> see Jesus. You're saved, right, by faith in Christ? Is she? Yeah, yeah. So when we look at others, other Christians, we should see Jesus, even when we don't do things that sometimes are correct. Because sometimes we, what? We end up sinning, right? So next time you see your sister, 
and you're getting angry. You never get angry, right? Sometimes, Sometimes, okay. See Jesus, because she's saved just like you are. Okay, let's say a short little prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying for us, dying for our sins. We love you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to actually leave that there. So grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. The picture I showed them, which you're not going to be able to see, is a painting. I can't remember if it's, yeah, it's behind the altar in the city church in Wittenberg. And I actually found that out from a, uh, a professor from mine, of mine. Otherwise, I had no clue it was there. I've never been there. So let's kind of shift gears here a little bit. When you were a child, did you ever try to run away? Anybody? Am I the only one? <laughs> <laughs> Probably didn't get far. How much did you pack? Nothing. Nothing. Grocery, bags. Grocery bags. I only packed some sandwiches. <laughs> In fact, I think I even asked my mom where some of the stuff was and things. So I needed her help. Um, it was hard when I started thinking of this. It's, it's hard to remember that far back. Do you remember a show with Opie in it? Andy Griffith's show? Remember when Opie ran away? He had a little bag. I, I think it was on a stick, am I right? Yeah, one very big, didn't take very much with him. In life, we start out pretty light. We don't have very much. And then, uh, you know, there's not too many worries, not too many problems, not too many obstacles. But then as time goes by, our bag gets filled up with worries, problems, resentment, jealousy, which turns into hatred. Sometimes we get a view that the world is running amok. Sometimes we might even say, God, what are you doing? <laughs> Why don't you, what are you doing? Why don't you act? We might not physically say that, but we might think that. Or we might get these thoughts of, um, well, I'm a, I'm a good Christian. You know, I'm a, I'm a pastor, I'm a teacher. I'm, a, I'm not talking always about myself, but tap pastor. Think pastor, teacher, elder. Um, I'm on the ladies' guild. I'm on the altar guild. I'm on the. I go to Bible study. I I read the Bible. I'm a good person. I mean, we all start out. We grow up, and we want to be revered. We want to be honored. And we might think, well, at least I'm not as bad as that guy over there. Or we might say to another, now maybe not directly to the other Christian, but we say, well, I don't think they're a very good Christian by what they're doing. Matthew 21, it's not our text for today. But Peter turned and saw the disciple from whom Jesus loved following them, the one who also had leaned back against him during the supper and set, had said, and you probably don't remember this, because, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that he remain, he's talking about Judas, 
until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. And he probably said it a little stronger. So the saying spread among the brothers that the disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say that to him, that he was not to die. But if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Jesus told Peter, mind your business. At times we worry about the wrong things just like the disciples did. At times we seek to show that what we know about God or our status. At times we... We're like the disciples seeking status within God's church. We carry with us our our status. I thank God that I'm not like the other sinners. We carry with us the sorrow of broken relationships in our families and friends. We carry with us, hopefully it's in there, that God, God sent Jesus to end our suffering on earth. We carry with us the disappointments in this life. In American society, we say, who is the greatest? Where do I fit in or measure up? You can kind of put a label, whatever. There's nothing wrong with success. But if I were to ask you right now and kind of think about this, who is the greatest? Here in this place in the kingdom of God. Who would you say? (laughs) That's what the disciples asked. And that's the wrong question to ask. And you know Jesus' reply. He said, truly I say to you, if you do not have a change of heart and become like little children, you will, go, you will not go into the kingdom of heaven. That's like, oh, I wish I had something I could slam because that's like, bam. I mean, that's huge. The gates are closed if you don't become like little children. Whoever then will make himself as low as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever gives honor to one such little child in my name gives honor to me. But whoever is a cause of trouble to one of these little ones who have faith in me, it would better for him to have a great stone, and let's Get back to the original language. It's actually a a stone that a donkey turns. It's a millstone. So this millstone's probably at least like this. I'm not sure. We don't know. But think about a donkey has to turn it. It's got to be big. So. For every cause of trouble to one of these little ones who have faith in me, it would better for him to have a great millstone fixed around his neck and to come to his end in the depth of the sea. Man, I'll tell you, they put a millstone around your neck that quick, you're going down. You're going down quick. A child become like a child? I want to make sure we're not missing any other children, but you look in the back row if you turn around and look in that end of the the back row the back pew what if I were to tell you you need to be like them when you grow up (laughs) you need to be like them what would you tell me 
You're crazy. I heard that. <laughs> and that's what they would have said in ancient Palestine. What are you, crazy? I mean, they would literally probably say that. Because children were not, sorry guys, but you didn't learn everything in kindergarten. Patience of a gnat. <laughs> um, there's lots more to learn in life. I mean, what grade are you guys in? Six. Sixth? Second? Fifth? There's a lot of learning to happen. There's a lot of decisions that children make that after they make them, you know they're children. So become like a child. What is it about a child? When you ran away or tried to run away, who bought the food that you packed? Your parents. Who bought the clothes you were wearing when you were going to go? Parents. Parents. Who provided the money to buy the food and the clothes? <laughs> I think they got it. <laughs> That's the whole idea. Jesus has done everything for us. We cannot do anything. That I was trying to look up this joke that I heard many, many, many years ago, and I, I couldn't find it on the Internet. Imagine that. Everything's supposed to be there. It's about, I, I think it's a, a priest and a Baptist and a Martin Luther, I think, go to heaven. And they're at the pearly gates. And St. Peter kind of says, he's like, well, why, why should I let you in? And the first is, you know, something about works. Second, more about works. You know, my bag's filled with works. And then Martin Luther gets up there and he's like, oh, I forgot. Because I thought the works were on earth. So I left them there. <laughs> we don't need anything in our bag but faith. But faith. As Christians, and when we're involved in other Christians, think about that painting in the city church in Wittenberg. That when we see each other, we see Jesus. Instead of all our faults. Because the other thing about this, you know, we got this thing about the millstone. It's not. It's, it's about other Christians. It's about the, oh, you're not, very, you're not doing very well. You need, you know, or you tell everybody else that that person's not doing well. I always point to somewhere there's nobody ever sits, which is the front row. <laughs> And that's why we look to the cross. And I had never heard this before until I heard, um, I think it was Jeff Gibbs from the, the uh, Concordia Seminary was saying this. You know, look through the eyes of Jesus. And he got it through Martin, from Martin Luther, by the way. But we see Jesus. And I need to remember that when I look out is that I see Jesus. Because... I am saved by God's grace through my faith in Jesus. 
despite some of the thoughts and the words and the deeds. And so are you (laughs) saved by that. So that bag that we like to pack and maybe we'll think we'll get up to the pearly gates, which I don't think there are any pearly gates, by the way. (laughs) Um, We don't need it. So all that, what happens is when we're looking and dealing with each other through the eyes of Christ, we can look past and not see the person's and the person's flaws. And I did not pay him to say that when he was up here. Because <laughs> he saw the cross. And that's what we should see, is see the cross. Jesus will work in, that, in us, that change of heart. And that's a continual battle in our life. When Luther died, he left these words. We are beggars, this is true. That's it. I'm going to mispronounce the city because I didn't look up the pronunciation. He died in... Is Lisbon? Not even close? E-I-S-L-E-B-E-N. He died in a city in Germany (laughs) on February 18, 1546. Within sight of the font where he was baptized as an infant. We are beggars. This is true. We, We need everything. Like children, we need everything that Jesus has for us. And we remember our baptism. We need him to constantly remind us that we are baptized children of God. On account of that, he will never forsake us or leave us. He will always be with us. Praise be to Jesus for dying for us and forgiving us. Amen. Amen. Let us rise for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed Lord, you have promised that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst of them. Hear the prayers of your people and grant those requests. Lord, in your mercy, Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have sent us pastors as watchmen. Let them ever be faithful in calling sinners to repentance and joyfully announcing your forgiveness to those who heed their warning. Lord, in your mercy, gracious Father, because you have made us our brother's keeper. Fill us with care for members of our earthly families and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Forgive our sins and strengthen us to live 
so that we owe no one anything except to love each other. Lord, in your mercy. Righteous God, you give leaders to every nation and people. Grant us good and wise public servants to bear the sword righteously, defending the innocent, punishing wrongdoers. Guard those who protect us, especially our armed forces, police, and firefighters. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, look with compassion upon those who are struggling with illness, grief, loneliness, and any malady. We pray for Sharon, Edison, Gary, Violet, Jack, Alan, Sherry, Bella, and Elsie, and for all those that we name in our hearts. Reassure them of your love, which is like that of a shepherd who seeks and saves the one lost sheep. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you desire that none of your little ones should perish. And because sin is constantly crouching at our door, we beg you to call us back to yourself when we are tempted to stray. Deliver us from temptation and keep us in the faith. Make us humble like little children, seeing how your son humbled himself for us and for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for those who are suffering due to disaster, violence, or fear. Keep them safe and give them your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend, commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us rise. Give us. 
us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face smile upon you and be gracious upon you. The Lord look down upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. So flowers this morning are given by the Duckwitzes for Pat's birthday. I don't know why I have trouble finding you guys because you're in the same place every time. <laughs> But I should be like, yeah, trained. Um, so our birthdays this morning are Pat Duckwitz and uh, Joyce Kalonowski. Did I pronounce her name, last name right? Yes? Okay. Some, you, I have no problem being connect, uh, corrected with, with names. Let's sing happy birthday to our friends. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear friends, happy birthday to you, God's blessings on you, God's blessings on you, God's blessings dear friends, God's blessings on And an anniversary of 16 years, uh, Carrie and Brad uh, Steckline. So that's, let's give them a. Uh, stay for food and fellowship. Uh, I'm going to say desserts, but the goodies are provided by the Gerlachs. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, we're going to probably finish disc three for the Bible study of the Bible. Um, and then we kind of get into some gory stuff of the uh, crucifixion. Which, it's, if you've seen the Bible, the movie, it's, it does get pretty bloody. Um, also join us for uh, Sunday School with Linda. Um, Wednesday's Bible class. Um, join us for, for Exodus. 
I think we're on, we're not on chapter six, we're on lesson six, um, going into that, and there's, I think there's nine lessons, so almost, almost through. Uh, We need people to sign up for, I don't know if you've, that big chart over there for flowers. There are two vacant spaces for October. Do not rush all at once. <laughs> no, if, just to let you know, there are a couple of vacant spaces. So if, um, if you're so moved, um, take, a, take a look at it after church. Also, we, we still need readers and ushers, although some have uh, kind of stood up and said, hey, God wants me to do that, and we thank, we thank you for that. Anything else I'm missing Also, you can also do it online for $25. That would include the $10 postage. We're looking for volunteers to give the $10 postage to boxes. Uh, we're looking for volunteers to bring items for the boxes. You can pick up simple items like uh, a bar of soap, a toothbrush, a comb, a brush, a jump rope, um, things for in a, in a girl's hair. Uh, just no liquids, but anything that you can start contributing, uh, we need them for the middle of November, but as soon as possible, so we can start packing boxes. Thank you. Yes. I just want to tell everyone that we are becoming the end of the sun, summer, so we are going to begin our ladies groups, our monthly programs. And uh, our first one is scheduled for October 2nd, that's the first Monday in October, will be our first LWML meeting at 1 o'clock on that date. And we'd like all of you ladies who are interested in helping with all of the programs that we do through the winter to please be with us that first week. We'll get some thoughts and ideas of what people like to do, and we'll just enjoy getting back together again. So I uh, just wanted to let you know all ladies are welcome, and we want you to come if you will. Thank you. Oh, one more. <laughs> a couple things. The com- church council is going to meet next Sunday after Bible study. And while you're back enjoying refreshments, you'll notice a little church sitting on the side. And we would ask that you generously contribute to the fuel to keep our lawnmowers running. Otherwise, we will be overgrown. So anything you might contribute would be good to keep our lawnmowers fired up and our lawn mowing crew happy. So thank you. It's right on the counter where you pick up your coffee. It's a gas can. Oh, it's a gas can now. We got rid of the church. Okay. That's not a good thing. <laughs> So, so join us. Join us for some fellowship afterwards. <laughs> Go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.